fact, 87.5% of information for entrepreneurs is wrong, or at least it's wrong for you. Today, we're going to be talking about wealth dynamics and the eight different types of entrepreneurs so that you can understand how each one not only builds and creates wealth, but also leverages that wealth, making sure that you're doing the right stuff for you and your business. A lot of entrepreneurs spend years building the wrong business or doing things that are not in their flow before they finally figure out the stuff that works for them. In fact, a lot of people never figure out what works for them and they end up in a business that they feel really chained to. The wealth dynamic system helps get rid of all of that is it allows you to really hone in on the things that are best for you that you should be focused on who should be on your team so that you make sure you're taking your effort in the right direction. Now, as entrepreneurs, a different element that when we're in it, we're operating at a higher level of proficiency, getting more done, making more money, making a bigger impact in the lives of our clients, our customers, and our teams. You're in your flow and that you're enjoying building your business. One of my favorite things about Wealth Dynamics is that it tells you your winning formula as well as your losing formula. So you can make sure you're doing the things that are actually going to get you results and avoiding the mistakes that could sink you. Now, a little bit about the history of Wealth Dynamics. This system was created by a man named Roger Hamilton, who has become a mentor of mine. He originally created the system in 2003, but it's based off of the I Ching, which is a 5,000 year old text that the Chinese have literally used for thousands of years to be able to figure out how to interface with their own lives the changing of the seasons, the changing of their lives, and how people are actually different. And that's what it distills into these eight different profile types, is that there are eight different approaches to being an entrepreneur and having a business. And when you understand which approach is right for you, you're able to get results that otherwise you would never be able to attain. Now, I've been mentored by Roger himself for years, and together we helped over 3,000 people discover this wealth dynamic system. And so I'm super excited to be showing it to you, hopefully even introducing you to the concepts that are going to make a massive difference in your business and in your life. So let's go ahead and dive in. Begin by looking at what we call the wealth dynamics square. Now, if you've already seen my entrepreneur element video, then you may recognize the idea of having the wood element, the fire element, the earth element, and metal. Now, while each of these elements represent a natural place and a natural state for each entrepreneur to be in as they're doing their work and the work that they choose to actually do as a career and as a living, this also follows a sequence. And that sequence looks like this. Up here, we have spring. So if you look at the I Ching, it talks a lot about nature. In fact, one of my favorite quotes from Lao Tzu is that in nature, all is accomplished, but nothing is rushed. So if we understand that there's a natural flow, a natural sequence to the, to the seasons, and that that also applies to our business, applies to us as individuals, we begin to realize that spring moves to summer, moves to fall, and moves to winter. And in the same way that the seasons move, so too does the progression of our business. But right now what we wanna focus on is how these create the different profile types, how people show up differently depending on where they are on this wealth dynamic square. So to do that, let me grab a couple of markers here so we can change some colors up. Over here, as mentioned, this is wood energy. Now the wood energy person in the wealth dynamic system has what's called a dynamo frequency. Now, a dynamo person, right, is going to be somebody who's very ahead in the clouds, highly intuitive, highly dynamic, right? So this person actually thinks differently from, say, somebody down here who's earth energy. So this dynamo person, their thinking dynamic is going to be called intuitive. So they're an intuitive person. So naturally, they're going to come up with ideas and make connections that are beyond what other people can see. Now, the opposite of an intuitive thinking dynamic would actually be a sensory thinking dynamic. And so for that reason, we call this person a tempo, right? So a tempo energy or a tempo person, this person's really great with timing, much more sensory, ear to the ground rather than head in the clouds. So it's a very different dynamic. So if you find yourself as a creative person coming up with ideas all the time, making these invisible connections in the sky, don't be surprised if you meet somebody else who doesn't see things the way that you do. These ear to the ground sensory people tend to be able to see the details that these dynamos oftentimes lose. If we rotate to the right here and we say, okay, this summer energy person, this is actually what we call a blaze energy person. Now, as far as the way that they think, you know, they're gonna be either intuitive or sensory or a mixture of both, but being over here on the right-hand side, that actually uh, uh, signifies for us what their action dynamic is. So the way that they act is what we call extroverted. Okay, obviously the opposite to that is going to be introverted action. 
and we call this person steel. So if you think of blaze and fire energy as like out there, connecting with people, like shining, making things happen, big, bold, that's blaze. Steel is quite the opposite of that, right? Steel is, is very certain, right? Very calm, very collected, uh, very specific, very detailed, right? So very different from the blaze fire, the steel is very consistent. And so we see that these are two very different action dynamics. Now you may have thought of yourself as an introvert or an extrovert. That may or may not apply to you in this scenario because in this scenario what we're talking about isn't how you recharge, it's like how you get stuff done. So as an extroverted person, the way that you get things done is through people. As an introverted person, the way that you get things done is by understanding how to do it yourself. Right? So it's two different ways of making things happen, but they're both very effective. So with this basic understanding, this is what wealth dynamics is built off of. Now, again, if you know what your entrepreneur element is, you say, well, I'm a wood person, or I'm an earth person, or fire, or metal, that's a great place to start. But there's actually eight different profiles that exist within this. So if you already know whether you are fire, or your wood, or your metal, or your earth, go ahead and comment down below. Say, hey, I'm fire, I'm wood. And while you're at it, say where you're from. That way, if there's somebody that might be looking for a fire person on their team, they'll be able to reach out to you. All right, cool. So this actually breaks down again into eight different profile types. The first profile type up here is what we call the creator. Now, a creator being right at the top is very dynamo. Their primary energy is going to be dynamo. Now, their thinking dynamic is going to be, you know, this intuitive thinking, right? So very much head in the clouds like the dynamo oftentimes is. But they're smack dab in the middle of introvert, extrovert. So sometimes you'll have more introverted creators, which show up as inventors, and sometimes you'll have more extroverted creators, which really show up kind of as pioneers, creating companies and building businesses. Somebody like a Richard Branson, as opposed to maybe um, somebody who's more inventive like uh, an Edison, right? So when we look at the creator, the creator is really great at starting, right? They're actually the first profile, and as we said, these follow the sequence from spring to summer to fall to winter. So the beginning of spring is that creator profile type. Great at getting things started. Not so good at getting them finished. Now, moving from the creator to the right, we have this profile right here, which is called the star profile. Now, the star profile having a, a pretty decent mix of both the wood and the fire energy is going to be a people person and an ideas person. Bringing people and ideas together is what they do best. In fact, as is kind of implied with the name, a star is really great at shining, shining the light. So when a star is shining the light on an idea, they do great. Oftentimes, though, they just want to shine the light on themselves. And when that happens, oftentimes they push people away. And like creators, they're always moving really fast and thinking of crazy ideas and coming up with stuff. And so oftentimes their teams don't get looked after, either creators or stars, as much as the other profiles, which I'll show you here in a moment. The main thing to understand about a star is that they're definitely extroverted when it comes to how they get things done, right? They love being the center of attention. They love being on the stage. They love shining the light, but they're going to do it through other people, magnifying themselves and their brand. Now, as we move to the right some more, we have this next profile here, which we call our supporter. Now the supporter profile moving another degree away from that dynamo is now smack dab in the middle of sensory and intuitive, which means they're going to have that ability to kind of know what's going on in the here and the now in a way that stars and creators don't because they're all in the future head in the clouds. Supporters are your great leaders. They're, they're great at being able to lead teams, organize people, connect, network. In fact, oftentimes the downside of being a supporter is they're so busy connecting without a system or a reason that they create value that a creator or a star would love to have because they have all these connections, but they don't find a way to monetize it. So as a supporter, you wanna make sure that you're linking your network and your ability to find and lead teams to your wealth. So that's how supporters really create wealth. Somebody uh, that would be very popular as a, as a supporter would be somebody like Jack Welch, right? So he was able to, to run a multi-billion dollar company that he didn't create, but he did it through leadership. Speaking of leadership, let's move to this next person right here this is our deal maker. Now our deal maker having that blaze energy just like the supporter and the star is very extroverted in their action dynamic, meaning they're gonna go get things done through other people. In fact, a deal maker might make as much money in one deal in one year as a creator makes in a decade building and creating things because deal makers can do something that these people up top can't do and that is know when things should happen. A million dollars can be made by what you say 
Million dollars can be made by what you don't say. And doing things at the right time is critical. So what the deal maker has that these other profiles don't is that sensory knack for timing. Bringing the people together with the right timing, making deals happen. Oftentimes you'll find deal makers uh, are working with stars, right? They'll be the person in Hollywood that actually is the agent that goes and gets the contract signed, etc. The deal maker profile would be somebody like Donald Trump. Love him or hate him, how he's gotten to where he is in business and politics, etc., has been through people. It has been through making deals happen, right? So the deal maker profile, this person is constantly going to be connected to people. It's important that you stay connected to people and you don't get lost in systems and spreadsheets and things that pull you away from people. And instead you're in that constant communication. Now, being that they are sensory is amazing and they're extroverted. But if we move a little bit more towards the introverted side, we get a whole different profile right here. So the trader profile, this is the opposite of our creator. So whereas the creator's coming up with ideas head in the clouds, our trader is very much ear to the ground down here at the bottom, focused on the here and the now. Whereas the deal maker might do one big deal a year and make all of their money, the trader does deal after deal after deal after deal, super consistent. And while they may utilize a lot of data to be able to make their decisions, they're not so dependent on systems. They just have a knack for timing and they know when things should happen. A trader's power it really comes in their ability to kind of separate themselves from the market to see how their decisions are different from what's happening in the market in a way that creators and stars and supporters just don't do. Oftentimes, these profiles up here make the money the fastest, spending it even faster, whereas these people may make it slower, but it's that consistent track record. A, a person down here, a good example would be George Soros, who consistently since the 1970s has earned like a 30% return every single year. Sure, it may not be some big flashy, uh, surprising or, or impressive product that he's coming out like Elon Musk on a big stage and showing you something that makes a billion dollars, but that 30% compounding every single year has amassed him billions. All right, let's talk about someone else. This guy right here. This is your accumulator. Could be a lady. Uh, accumulator is going to be somebody like Warren Buffett. So they've got that sensory, they've got that ear to the ground, they know what's happening in real time, right? So they're very much their thinking dynamic in the sensory land, but their action dynamic, full introverted. So this is where it's going to be much more about the systems, being able to kind of systematically um, predict what will be happening in the markets. In fact, that is the way that Warren Buffett has accumulated all of his wealth, is by sitting down here where he's taken the actions by knowing specifically what's going to happen, but also having a really good understanding of when. So this is where the numbers and the data start to really become your best friend. And accumulators, like their name implies, accumulate, 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 constantly bringing together more money. Um, it could be files, right? If your accumulator could be a person who's really good uh, at working with uh, with video or working with you know documentation and they keep all of that accumulated and organized. So not only as an entrepreneur building wealth can an accumulator be valuable, but an accumulator could be a really valuable member of your team. Oftentimes being the, the person holding down the kite string as the, the flag of the star, or the, the kite of the star is trying trying to float away with a new idea, the accumulator is going, well, wait a second, can we afford that? Is now the right time to do that? And they help you avoid making those big mistakes. So if you're an accumulator, you are super rare and super valuable. So don't forget about that. Billions can be made in all of these profiles. Okay, let's move up another step. In the middle, again, between intuitive and sensory, but now not extroverted, instead introverted, we have our Lord profile. Now, your lord, this is uh, somebody like Sergey Brin. They're very behind the scenes. Oftentimes, they're landlords. These people get things done directly. So they don't even need to necessarily own assets because they're so good at managing assets, overseeing and making sure things get done. High need for certainty on the lord side. Your lord is going to be somebody who is able to show up consistently, make sure the details are taken care of. Your lord often produces their wealth by managing the flow of capital. In other words, you could make a million dollars by simply saving a million dollars. You don't have to just increase the top line for the bottom line to be affected. So the Lord can be a very powerful profile, if that's what you have, for being a leader in a business that manages a lot of assets. Now, our Lord, being on the introverted side, does stuff themselves. Being between intuitive and sensory means they have that ability sometimes to engineer a better way, come up with a better system, come up with um, savings possibilities, but not nearly as well as this profile right here, who is all about doing that. So our mechanic, constantly tinkering. In that intuitive land, not so much in the sensory, head in the clouds a lot, but also very stinking detailed. They're the great finishers. 
maybe not as great uh, at starting things as creators are. In fact, a lot of times mechanics get lost in the details. They want it to be perfect before they will launch. They want it to be ideal. And so they get in that analysis paralysis. But ultimately, because the mechanic has that intuitive nature and that still nature, they're the great redesigners of society. If you think about Mark Zuckerberg, he's a mechanic. If you think about Sam Walton, he's a mechanic. If you think of Jeff Bezos, he's a mechanic. These people didn't write books or create things from scratch. They took existing models and made them better, right? So for example, amazon.com is a system for delivering products cheaper, better, uh, more consistently than anybody else has from an online platform. Again, you can love or hate the person, but you can always learn from them. And the mechanic is the person who is the great tinkerer, the great perfecter of systems and making things work even better than they were to begin with, which then brings us back to our creator. So in the same way that there's eight different profiles and in the same way that they follow these seasons, so too does our business begin with the product, goes into marketing, connects with the team, connects to other markets, serves our customers. We take care of our accounting and our numbers and make sure the books and everything are in place. Then we make sure that our systems are good and then we improve and perfect going around and around and around the circle as we grow our business and as we grow our wealth. The last thing that I'll show you on this, and there's so much more that we could go into, is that every profile actually has two wings. So if you're a creator, that is gonna be your primary way of showing up in business, but you also have a star wing and a mechanic wing. So the profiles that are immediately left and right of your profile, those are going to also be a huge role in how you actually build your business. Okay, so this is the Wealth Dynamics Square. The last thing I'll say on this is that not all profiles are created equally. If you are a creator, you might have a very different spider graph than another creator. So I will show you what a spider graph looks like. This is a spider graph right here. You'll notice this is actually my profile, so I'm a creator profile type, and you'll see that I have 76% of this dynamo energy. That's very different from a person who might only have 50%. Could look like a superpower at first glance, but then you notice my tempo here, I actually have 0% tempo. So that means that I need someone on my team that can help with that area of my business. So understanding exactly what your profile is, looking at your individual metrics, that is what the name of the game is all about.